Hey, what's going on guys? Come Monkey Kings here. In the last video, I promised you to start implementing parse if you function or to convert the string representation of the chessboard position to the actual uh, board position. Uh, but before that, we need to define a couple of uh, data structures to map uh, our pieces uh, and squares back and forth. So in this video, we'll, uh, uh, so this video would be dedicated to this topic in particular, and I really hope that the next video we would actually start implementing our parse FEM and, and hopefully end that as well. Okay, uh, but um, probably maybe they would have been split it a little bit because uh, there quite a, quite a bit of explanation is needed there. But well, we'll see. So the very first thing to consider, uh, I want to be able to convert uh, board board square indexes to coordinates so you know like to say like e2 e4 a1 a8 and so on so let's create the character pointer and call this um, square to coordinates and this like okay I just close some this unnecessary stuff here okay and just want to open the terminal in the current working directory and want to compile this again so it still kind of works and I just want to open my Python uh, interactive shell in order to uh, quickly provide uh, our our data here so this would be like a8 and then like b8 and so on so on so until we map every single character uh, every single square uh, on the board so let me try to quickly implement this in python so we need to loop over the ranks uh, uh, in the reverse order so 8765432 one and here we say like four rank in this list and now we also want to interact over the files so a b c d e f g a b c d e f g h i j i've got the alphabet, alphabet sorry a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p okay and i can say like for file in this list and we want to have uh, our data being closed within this double quotes and here we want to have our file plus the stringified rank okay yeah perfect so from now on we can loop over the entire data structure so we can say like four row in this list and we can print the row okay and now we want to convert this uh, to join this row by comma followed by the empty space dot join this like and append the comma at the very end so this should work yeah perfect so let's try to grab this data structure and just copy this and just trying to paste this in my, in my source code okay so uh, now, well, I will need this Python interpreter to create one more data structure, so I'm not going to be closing this for now. And I just want to open my main console here, so to make sure that everything compiles and runs, perfect. So uh, the next thing to consider, so here we did enumer enumerate our pieces, but it was it also would have been nice to uh, enumerate our squares. So here I defined the square encoding okay and uh, I say in um, squares and here we would have like uh, another data structure so uh, we don't need the entire stuff we need to encode only those squares that are actually on board so I would alter my Python one-liner slightly a bit so we need uh, to loop over only over this guys here and yeah and also we don't need uh, this quotes anymore so let's see yeah just just perfect and just grab this data structure as well and also uh, we need to 
specify the index shifts here. So A8 would have been the index of zero, which is quite pretty natural. Uh, but A7 already would have been the index of 16. So we're just skipping this eight squares to the right, which are invisible. So A, uh, A7, A6 would have been 32. A5 would have been 48. And then I just need a calculator. So 48 plus 16. Really sorry for this, guys, but uh, 16 plus 48 equals so 64. Okay, and here it would be like 64. Uh, oh my god, where is my calculator? Okay, 64 plus 16, 80. Okay, and they, then this should be 96, I guess, right? And the very last one is 112. Okay, so let me just actually check that out to make sure uh, I didn't miss anything. Sorry for firing this MySQL workbench for now. Okay, plus six. Sorry for this. And plus 16. Okay, perfect. So, uh, and we will also need one more little thing. Uh, to consider so we will need to convert this ASCII characters back to to our pieces so uh, okay so where to put the, them probably here so we, we want to uh, no it's better let's, let's define them just right over in here so uh, let's say uh, uh, convert convert ASCII uh, uh, well let's let's better say encode ASCII piece pieces okay and here uh, I'll just create the integer called character pieces and this would be the type of oh, sorry not like this this would be the array and here we can specify we can use uh, these characters as indexes for the array because uh, implicitly they are converted to integers so it's just for, for the user uh, it's just for the user readability we, we can use um, well what I want to say that in C programming language uh, let me just Again, uh, I will try to make use of my Python interpreter here. So, um, if I say forward, let's say this pawn. So the code for uh, for uh, black pawn is one hundred and twelve. Okay. So, but but when but when we uh, uh, so if we say like p in Python, this would be treated as the character. It's basically, this is the the, the string. It would just have the type. Of this p, it would give us a string, right? Uh, but the type of this kind of guy in C, it would be uh, an, uh, a character. But character is the same as the integer; they're just a slightly bit smaller. So we can use these characters as uh, as the indexes. Uh, so we could have say like uh, 112 equals to uh, actually p, like this. But this is a bit weird, like. How to get this number but we can say simply like p equals to p but we'll start uh, with the uh, white pieces and then move to the black pieces so the knight would be equal to knight and so let me just try to copy this paste 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 and bishop uh, rook queen and kin and here Bishop, Rook, Queen, and King, and literally the same for the black pieces as well. Okay, so when we would be implementing our parser in function, you will understand how how handy this is to have this like short cards. That would have been incredibly pleasant to initialize our board, basically. So P, uh, Knight, Bishop, Rook, Queen, and the King. Okay, 
So let's. Tr so uh, probably I don't need this Python interpreter anymore. So I can close this and let's get back to our console. So I hope this still compiles and runs, and it does. Okay, perfect. And now let's uh, actually try to make some tests. So the very first thing to consider. Well, let's say board and let's say square e2 which implicitly would have been converted to the index of the square of e2 right over in here and let's make it equal to say empty square so our e remember it stands for empty square save let's have a look uh okay excuse me so hold on a sec this something has gone horribly wrong I have no idea why why this doesn't work to be honest mm. this is really strange if I just say zero doesn't doesn't respond to oh my god that's because <laughs> what am i doing now that's because i need to first to replace the stuff and then print in the board obviously okay so let's start like e2 would be empty square okay now we got this um, uh, this e2 square being empty and now let's say board e4 would be equal to white pawn okay so now we have this white pawn on the e4 which is quite pretty nice right and also um, we can uh, do the next thing so uh, say uh, uh, say we uh, so we can print uh, let's print print f our uh, square some okay so decimal i guess and well let's say e4 so the decimal number for e4 would it be 68 right right over in here and now uh we can also uh print uh another thing here so let's print the coordinates for uh so s and so here we can say like square and coordinates uh and here so how do I call this array? Square to quartz. Okay, so square to quartz, and here I would have e4, and it should print e4 as a string uh, already now at the moment. So yeah, it did convert the e4 like encoded to 68 to the string version of e4. Well, okay, so uh, probably now you have no idea like wh why the hell do we need to do this, but later on uh, along the development process you would realize that this is really quite pretty handy. So let me just try to check if this is kind of it. And yes, I guess, I guess this is it. This is it, I guess. So yeah, uh, let's stop this video right at this point and starting from the next video we will uh, actually start implementing our parse function. So see you next video. Take care.